Good morning. Good morning, family. If you want to stand up and join me, we're just going to activate the Holy Spirit in us. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to join together and to worship you. We just focus our hearts and our minds on you this morning. We give you all our attention. We say you have all our attention, Lord. You have our focus this morning. We surrender to your will for today. Take us where you want to take us, Father. Show us what you want to show us. Do a new thing in us this morning. As we set our minds on you, as we set our hearts on you, we ask that you would come in and that you would sweep in this place in a new way, in a fresh way. We stir up your presence, Father God. We activate the Holy Spirit inside of us and we say, come, Lord, dwell in this place. Let this be a place of freedom, of liberty of your presence, of miracles, of signs and wonders. We lay every burden aside this morning, every distraction, every care and every worry, we lay it at your feet this morning. And we just focus in on your presence. We focus in on your goodness. We bring heaven down this morning. Father, we open our hands and we surrender to your will this morning. We surrender to your way this morning, that you would have your way, not even just in this morning, but in our hearts and in our lives, every care and every worry. We just surrender to your will, Father. We thank you for your presence here. We thank you for freedom, that you would come and that you would move like never before, that you would bring heaven down to earth, that everything that is said in heaven, everything that, all every, every healing, every... Um, Everything that you have spoken, every promise, we bring it down this morning. Father, we say, as in heaven it is on earth this morning, Father, we bring it down in Jesus' name. We just create us uh, a habitation for your presence here, Father, in our hearts and even in our worship this morning and in our praise, Father. We say, have your way, Father, that you would come and that you would move in a new way, that you would stir up that fire inside us, Father, in Jesus' name. That you would move like never before. Every distraction we cast it aside, every hindrance and every blockage of your presence. Father, we just focus in on you. You have our undivided attention this morning. We lay it all aside. And we, do, we choose this morning to walk in freedom and liberty that comes with you in control, Father, that comes with every distraction set aside, that comes to surrender to your will and to your sovereignty, Father. We just walk in that freedom of your presence. We just connect in that way with you this morning, that everything is put aside, every carry care and worry is put aside in Jesus' name. We plug into your presence to what you want to do. Father, we surrender in whatever way you need to surrender this morning, if that's on your knees, if that's lifting your hands, if that's simply just putting away every other thought in your mind, we just surrender to the presence of God this morning. Give him permission to come and to have his way in Jesus' name. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, just a few more seconds. Just a few more seconds. Come on, wherever you are, in your car, in your house, at work. Come on, if you could just lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Jesus, we want you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we adore you. You're all that we need. You're all that we want. Come on, just a few more seconds. Give him everything you got. Give him everything you got. Give him everything you got. Come on, if you're at home, if you're watching live, please share this. You don't know who you can bless this morning. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go in this morning. Amen. Are y'all going to come in this morning? Amen. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. You are worthy of all our praise. That's why we're here, Lord. We've come for you, Jesus. We want to worship your mighty name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come, let us sing out this song of praise. 
Come on, lift up your voice if you know it. Let our hearts rejoice for you are great. Yeah. Nothing in this world compares to you.
satisfied. You sustain, Lord. Oh, Jesus, you satisfy. Oh, Lord, we never thirst when we drink from your well. Thank you, Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. You are here with us, Lord. Your presence is manifested in this place. Miracles, signs, and wonders can happen in your presence. Oh, Lord, your power has no limits. You are able to do exceedingly and abundantly. We believe it. Oh, we receive your promises, God. Oh, if you came today, oh, it's a, it's a day that the Lord has made. Oh, he's come to bless you. He's come to bless you. He's come to heal you. He's come to give you that breakthrough you've been wanting all week. Today is your day. We thank you, Jesus. In your presence, we are free. Hey, in your presence, we are free. In your presence, we are free. We believe it in your presence, we are free. Hey, in your presence, we are free. We are free. Yes, Lord, in your presence we are free. Hey, your presence we are free. In your presence, in your presence we are free. In your presence we are free. In your presence we are free. Yeah, in your presence we are free. In your presence we are healed. In your presence we are healed. In your presence we have peace. 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 So in your presence I am free. 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 Come on, just lift up. Give him a shout of praise. He's already done it. He's already done it. He's already done it. He's already done it. Receive it by faith this morning. Receive it by faith this morning. Your faith is going to a greater faith this morning. Oh, the glory of the Lord is going to another glory this morning. We receive it. We receive it. Oh, we receive it in our bellies. We are going to birth a queen of faith because we know that you have power that has no limits, Lord. The breakthrough, that healing, Oh God, it's here already. It's here. We grab it. We grab it prophetically. We bring it down from heaven. It's going to be how it is in heaven on earth this morning. We believe it. We manifest it in the name of Jesus. We receive it. Because in your presence I am free. In your presence hey. I am free. In your presence 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 I am free. In your presence, I am free. In your presence I am free. In your presence, I am free. That's it, church. Is that all you got this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 We're getting a little tired already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have more for you, God. We have more for you, God. This is all. This is just the beginning. Just the beginning, God. We came for you. We came for you, Jesus. Oh, we came for you, Jesus. We came for you, Jesus. For you, Jesus, you alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can you just give God the best hand clap of praise you've ever given? Hallelujah.
lift up your hands this morning just as a sign of surrenderance and a posture of worship. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, just a little bit more worship. Come on, if you have it in you, just a little bit more. Come on, sing it out to him. Sing, sing out your song right now. Sing out your song.
Jesus has Say, I have the authority. I have the authority. That Jesus has given me. Jesus has given me. I have the authority. I have the authority. I have the authority. That Jesus has given me. Jesus has given me. I have the authority. Thank you, Lord. Your healing bodies in this moment. Your healing bodies in this moment. Can I tell you? I, I want. I need. My family needs a touch from you. I can't come to church. Oh, and I can't go home the same way I came. But I, I need a change today. I need a change today. We want church. We don't want service. We want God. We want Jesus. Give us. Give us you. Reveal to ourselves. Reveal to us your love. Reveal to us your care. Reveal to us your peace. Reveal to us your joy. Reveal it. Reveal it. Reveal it. Reveal it. Reveal. It. Lift him up. He's worthy. He's worthy. Fill us. We empty ourselves from all the garbage that this week has tried to put in us. Many of us have become a dump down for other people's problems. We thank you that you're turning situations around. Exactly what you did for this church on Friday. Oh, Sheba Braba Hasia. May you look upon us. We come justified by the blood of Jesus. Wash us clean. Wash us. That was in praise that is to do is say thank you. Hallelujah. Oh man, oh man. Somebody is hungry today. I said, somebody's hungry today. Do me a favor, tell two or three people around you. Tell them, I'm so glad you made it to church today. I'm so glad you made it to Revival Sunday. The best seed you can in your hands. And let's give God what is due to his name. Now, here it is. I need you to give on that level. 
uh, this church are, are, are giving your generosity has increased through the pandemic. It hasn't gone down. It's increased that. And so I thank you for your, for your uh, honesty because we are used to receive, receive, receive. Amen. Am I, am I right, Chris? Your generosity, Jesse, right? Is going to be, you say, God, you bless me so I can bless someone else. This week is that opportunity. So if you want to give today, I'm telling you, yes, you give your tithe, but has God ever gotten a free will offering where you say, God, I'm going to go beyond because I know what this church does. How many know, how many are very clear about the mission of this church? Wear it with a sweater now that the winner is said, hello. Uh, some of y'all woke up today, uh, yesterday, and that thing shows up. It's a joke. It's all right to laugh in church. Our Father and our God, bless your people. There are people in this room that have a real need. Some people don't even ask you for begging for bread. That means this seed is going to impact the lives of my children's children. I prophesy that our children will never have to live under a bridge. I prophesy that your children will never. I'm going to say it again. You'll never. You'll never go without. You'll never go without. You'll never go without. There will always be milk. There will always be bread. Wonder bread at home. Since August, we've been in uh, talks with the uh, uh, with our attorneys, Attorney General, and we've been waiting on a. We serve, Amen. I receive that for my safe. Whatever's on the lead is coming on my life. Is there anyone here that can give God a shout of prayer? We need to give time to the man of God, Jeremiah and uh, Jesse stand up, the three J's. I need you, hear me, be loyal to that commitment, be committed to that. I need you to see the three of them so that we can position you correctly so that when you come on Thursday or Tuesday or Thursday, that way you know exactly what your assignment is. We want to do this in order. And we want to feed as many people as possible as efficiently as possible. Thank, hear me, in the food shortage, in the midst of a food shortage, we, show, we were able to purchase a pretty good amount of turkeys. And so it is because, amen. It is specifically, I want to thank Jeremiah. He's driven all the way down to Rochester to get turkeys. Serious. Can we just honor, honor that? Jesse, thank you for organizing our volunteers. Jordan, thank you for being a part of that. Can we thank God for them? Amen. And I want to personally thank Christian. Uh, Christian has had an amazing impact on what we've been able to do. Uh, the company that he works for has been very generous in allowing us uh, to purchase turkeys, to purchase food, and whatever we need for the rest of the year. So that, that specific donation has been made because of that man right there. So can we just thank God for him and his obedience? Amen. So please, also, amen. So please, also, if you know somebody who's in need, please send them. Amen. And we also need people that would cook turkeys if you want to host a turkey in the presence of your oven, you could do so. Uh, just let us know. Let uh, one of these three people know, and, and uh, we have them take them home and cook. How many are ready for the word of the Lord? Amen. I want to give as much time as possible. Let's privilege uh, to meet this man uh, a couple months ago. And right after we spoke, I told him, you need to come to Prince of Peace because I know there's a word that you have for our house. He spoke to our men on Friday, and our men were radically changed. Yeah. I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord was in this room. And so I know it's not going to be any different today. Would you receive with a strong hand clap, Pastor Robert? This house? Come on, you could do better than that. Come on. You just got a property handed over to you. Can you I promise you, I'm not thirsty for the mic. I promise you I'm not. 
Oh. I preach every Sunday, every Wednesday at my church. Now your pastor brought me from New Jersey with no mercy. As they say in Spanish, like, I'm talking about the house. And we lost our church to a fit in um, April, and we lost it to a fire in September. And then I walked the way back in the woods of the property. We have fair enough um, land, crying, upset. Has anybody been upset at God before? Yeah. Uh -oh. All right. <laughs> I'll ask it again. Has God before? Let me see your hand for real. Keep it real. On September 11th, a Wednesday night, and I said, God, I don't want this. I was shouting for you guys right here. Because I know what it is to wait for something that you've been expecting for God to do in your life. Let me tell you, he won't share it, I'll share it. He picked me up. We were in the car on the way to, from eating, I don't know, I forgot. And we in the car and tongues. And watch this. I kid you not. I don't know why, but he started speaking in tongues. And I started feeling God's presence. I don't know why I didn't tongue sue. <laughs> Do something that you worked hard for. Or get excited for this house. Come on, I'm excited for this house. I really am excited for this for this house. I go with me to Acts 3. I bless your pastors, Pastor Amanda and Pastor Gabriel. Amazing. It's amazing, right? Uh, it's amazing, right? Uh, I'm, I'm talking to you guys, to your, about your pastors. Are they amazing? Close your eyes, both of you guys. Don't look back. Raise your hand how many of you guys love your pastor for real. Don't look back. There's still some hands not raised. I'm, I'm not from here, so I say whatever I want to say. You blame him for inviting me. <laughs> I just met your pastor, and I've considered him a, a, a friend. I'm not going to say best friend yet. It's working towards that. <laughs> Girls, you know, you don't, you're not the only one who has BBF or BFF, whatever you call it. I want to have a BBF too, sure. Okay. I'm, I'm so happy I'm here because it feels like I'm home. I am? I, I feel like I'm home. Friday was supernatural. My man, where my, give me some woo, woo, woo. Yeah. That's an inside joke. I kicked out three women intentionally. I said, you, get, you don't have to go, but you got to get the out of here. Uh, I'm wasting my time. Hello, Jesus. Acts 3, 1 through 10. I intend to read all 10 verses. Is that okay? I am a very animated preacher. I am married to a beautiful woman that she's from Buffalo. I sold her from here. You may know who she is. It's just Sandy Alevron. I, I took that name out and I said, you got to carry my name now. It's all good. Manas Lebron is raised and born and raised here in Buffalo. Uh, I'm from, originally from Boston, so we had a long distance relationships. I think it was good for me because every time I saw my wife, I I said, keep me at a distance. I'm the only real man here. I just, I feel like I'm talking by myself. Don't be too holy. When you see your wife or when she was your girlfriend, you, you thought things that you're like, you're not supposed to. Oh, let me flip it. Let me flip it because también la mujer is also the woman I'm the same way too. Yeah, so you saw your man, you're like, oh my God. He, he wasn't praising. What's the principle that I want to talk to you about before I start preaching? It was this, because I, I, I lost it and, I, and, I, and it came back. 
This is the principle I teach my church about giving. This is the, I, you could copy it, you could take it. Watch this. Watch this. The principle of release brings increase. I'll say it again. The principle of release invites increase. And you cannot experience abundance if you are sowing sparingly. That means you got to be able to release. How, how is it you asking God with a closed fist? He says, I can't pour in a closed fist. It'll go to waste. At the moment you open and release, you, you're telling me, I got room now, Pat. Pour it in my hands. Acts 3, 1 to 10 says, and when I'm done reading, you know the rule, puppy. Get down to receive. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man, I'm reading NIV. Now a man who was lame. Somebody say lame. From birth was being carried to the temple gate called the beautiful. Where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. There's a lot of dysfunction here already. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he begged them for money. Another version says he asked him or them for money. Peter looked straight at them, or at him, and did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the men gave them his attention, expecting to get something from who? From them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He didn't say get up. He said walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instant, wait a minute, wait a minute. The miracle, the miracle needs help. Okay. He said it does not, the miracle needs assistance. He says, he grabbed them by the right hand, helped them up, and instantly the men's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and what? Praising God. Somebody got to give him a shout. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, these are the people that he was begging from inside the temple. They recognize him as the same man who used to sit uh, begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. I want to go back to this verse 10. And, and it says, they recognize him as the same man who used to sit. What? Say what? Begging at the temple. I want to talk to you. I want to tell three people. Tell them, tell them. No more begging. Tell them, no more begging. Come on, tell three people. Stop begging. Stop begging. Father, I believe that you are here. And I trust you that you will use me. I am shaking inside. Please never take that away from me. To remind me of your presence. This is your glory in this place. Oh Lord, allow you speak through me for your children as I know you will this is a marvelous place I'm honored to stand in this altar and I praise you God amen amen give me a hand clap as you sit down somebody said no more begging I, I want to give you three points uh, or focus points where I'm going to be teaching from uh, but before I begin, um, I don't preach. Um, I, I preach like what's called a black, ch black church. In other words, if, if, if I talk, I need you to respond. Although I'm Puerto Rican and you can hear my accent, I was not raised and born here. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. I'm going to ask you to do one thing and only one thing. If you like what you hear, I want you to respond back. Yeah. Is that okay? I, I feel better when you talk back to me. So talk back to your preacher, man. I, I, I want to focus on, 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 this, on this three words, no more begging, because 
it's important for you to understand that people love it when you beg them. I'll say it again. One more, one more. People love when you beg them because they feel that they are in control and they can manipulate the outcome of your life. And you should be taking notes already. I'll say it again. The love for them, for you to beg them because they know that they are in control of the outcome of your life, but they don't know that there is a God that you serve. I want to focus first of all, and this God gave me this one, and during the pandemic, because I was struggling with finances in the ministry, and I don't say struggle, I was being tested. Let me clean that up. I was being tested in my faith with asking God we, what I already have promised me. So I began, I began to beg him for something he promised me. Let, let, let me talk to you about there's a difference um, between begging and asking. Begging is asking. Asking is not begging. I'm going fast because I got 24, 19 seconds to go. I, I was told to look at the clock and stay and behave, so I'm doing that. Uh, it's bad. It's bad. But, but it was birthed in me. God gave me this word, and I'm going to focus on one thing, and I want you to write this down. Watch this down. Watch this. You got to go from a pandemic to a plandemic. In other words, God was telling me, why are, you, why are you planning during a season of famine? And stop begging me because it's where you come from planning is that the release is coming into your house. I'm talking to you. I got you. I got you. The problem is that we focus more in the pain than the blessing that is already coming. I'm talking to you right now. Stop watching. Stop, stop begging folk the what they cannot give you and God already promised you. One, two, three, four. Stop begging folk for things that God already has in store for your family, for your marriage, for your children. They love it when you beg. But I came to take two, three people and tell them, stop begging them. They got nothing for you. So you got to go from a pandemic mentality to a pandemic mentality. In other words, I am gonna not going to waste my time asking you, oh, I'm sorry, begging you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest my time asking God. You missed it. You missed it. See, see, while you beg, you're wasting time. While you pray, you're asking God. <laughs> is anybody here in the house that is tired of begging folk that don't care about your outcome is anybody here in the house that is tired of begging people that don't know what to do I'm asking you right now to tell God I'm not begging you you promise me Socrates says the secret of change is to focus all your energy not fighting the old but building the new Socrates must have been thinking about my season of pandemic because he's reminding me that the more we ponder on what happened in the past we will not attain what was promised for us in the future uh, let me give you another one. Watch this. John Carmack. That's how you say it, Carmack. John Carmack says, focus is a matter of deciding what things you are not going to do. I'll bring you back to the story. I want you to see here. There's three things here. Number one, then you see the men's pathology. You see the men's pathology. In other words, you see the men's condition. I need you to write this down. Don't let your condition miss your position I, 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 don't let what's happening to you right now or happened to you before watch this eliminate or forfeit the fact that you have access to a blessing now I'm confused I'm confused I'm confused that they bring me you I'm, I'm, I'm the lame man I feel like I'm that man at, at times that I'm begging people pastor Amanda that I, they, they drag me they carry me into a place uh, and drop me in front of the place that's supposed to deliver me I call that a teasing mentality. 
You teasing me. You let me wonder and watch what could be instead of me understanding that I could have it right now. That, 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 that we know the pathology, we know the sickness, we also know the geography. We know where his, his location, where he's at. Yes or no? I want you to get this because God gave me this word for you guys. Uh, I, 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 I grabbed it from a series and, 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 and then I broke it even deeper. And God says, this is for the house. Tell them that they're not in position to beg. They're in position to ask. I brought the word. This is asking. I'm going to say it again. This is asking. Am I, I only got three. This is asking God. This is not begging God. You come in with purpose. I'm not going to ponder in the pandemic, the sickness. This is a plan. This is a, a, a design scheme that you're telling God. All things were for the good for those who. According to his purpose. Watch this. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to work this. Is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay? John 10 10 you know this verse it says the thief does not come except to what steal what kill and destroy I think he should have right wrote it backwards he should have put first destroy because it eliminates everything what's this I said he should have destroyed it why is he inter so interested in stealing before he destroys you? Because he rather you suffer alive. Watch this. I want you to get this. He wants to steal your joy because if he steals your joy and leaves you alive, you will ponder more in sorrow and loneliness and you will suffer more staying alive. He gets a joy seeing you begging. He gets a joy seeing you standing in a place of miracle and signs and nothing happens to you. You see people watching getting delivered and you are frustrated. How come I don't get delivered? I've been tithing. I've been offering. I've been faithful. I'm still at the door begging. You know what's the problem? Is that you are so focused on the pain rather than the blessing. write this down first of all he wants to steal your time second of all he wants to kill your vision and third he wants to destroy your faith begging is a hit or miss but asking is intentional I'll say it again begging is a hit or miss but asking has intentionality. Now let me break it down to you because when you beg somebody, you are putting your, watch this, your future in their hands. <laughs> let me ask you a question. What's causing you to beg? Because we got to go to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem wasn't, watch this, this is, I'm going to break your theology because I, I, I have to. It, it wasn't his lameness that made him beg. The writer said that he was, it wasn't that. It was that his heart wasn't right. Stop complaining for your brokenness. God is using your brokenness to fix people that have been broken too long. One, two, three, four. I'm tired of you begging because I'm broken. God is saying, I let brokenness come because I'm going to use your brokenness to fix people's brokenness. I come to tell you right now that you got to stop that like other folk and you gotta tell people I'm done begging I'm gonna ask my Jehovah Jireh I'm done begging I'm gonna ask Jehovah Nisi I'm done begging I'm gonna ask Jehovah Jireh hey, uh, say, uh, he, uh, kato, say, he, uh, ma, uh, write this down I gotta give you everything I got oh, it's his pathology was from birth. So begging triggers. 
begging triggers. You know what it is to be, car to be carrying every, watch this, he was laying from what? Birth. Birth. If you go to chapter 4, it tells you how old he's he. He's almost 40 something years old. Wow. Carry for 40 years. 40 represents a generation. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's carried for 40 years to a place that should have Watch it. That should have healed him from the get-go. But we got buses. I asked the question, who's more lame? Him or the people going in the temple? I said again, who's more crippled? The people, him begging or the people walking in the temple? Because if you lack mercy, you lame. You got it? If you lack love, you lame. The problem is, is that we see a homosexual coming in the temple and we see his lameness because his lame is visual. But I got some folk that are not homosexual, but they're more broken than the people that show their lameness. What was that? You know us. Have a seat, have a seat. I got 14 minutes and five seconds. Here we go. Watch this. I just gave you, I, I, I gave you the whole preaching there. Their lameness is invisible, but more toxic. Because their lameness, when it's invisible, it becomes more deadlier. Because what I cannot see, I cannot confront. But God's giving priests of peace a spirit of discernment uh, that I have had to see it in the physical. We see it in the spiritual. Since God showed me in the spiritual, I will refuse to beg for something that He already promised me. Begging has triggers. I read it to you. It triggers because do you imagine for 40 years being carried to a place that you're supposed to get a blessing and all of a sudden you're being dropped stop you stop right here you can't go further because you're lame okay okay I'm coming after you now you're not escaping second of all geography is the location the temple beautiful. In other words, here we go. The geography has to do a lot with his lameness because in Buffalo, New York, Prince of Peace becomes a geography place, a location. I, I, I'm taking you somewhere. In other words, the location does has to do a lot with miracles. You said it on Friday and you touched me. You said, you said that, that, that this becomes a breeding ground for miracles. So, so put on your notes, expectation is everything. Uh, so geography gives me the expectation. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prince of Peace gives me the expectation. Okay. Yeah. Prince of Peace becomes an expectation. You're missing it. Prince of Peace becomes a place of expectation. In other words, I was sending a nest to come in this way. The problem that we have in church that people don't come to church because we invite them enough. You go to a restaurant and you like the food in the restaurant, I promise you, their food and service provoke you to tell other folk, you got to come to eat in this place. You don't work for Outback. You don't even get a credit for Outback. But I had an amazing steak last night with shrimp that you brought me to. I got to tell folk, you got to go to Outback. It's really good. It's the same way when it comes in this location, this geography. When you come to Priest of Peace, you got to tell them there's something about that place. That the blame gotta walk, the sick is healed, the broken gets fixed. Touch three people and tell them that geography makes sense. Tell them, tell them, tell them. 
The location makes sense. Tell them, tell them, touch them, touch them. This place makes sense. You're not hearing me. This place makes sense. You are about to take over the whole block and you don't even know. One, two, three. Anybody in the back? Four. You are about to take over the whole block because it's been designed. It's the pandemic in the pandemic. You begging for a design that's been ordained for decades. It was breaking your puppy. Your papa just birthed it, but you gonna carry it. Check out. Your puppy birthed it, but you gonna carry it. Your puppy birthed it, but you gonna carry it. Your two babies, your girls, your girls, they're gonna see you carry it. They're gonna see you carry it. And you're confused, you don't even get it. Why am I here? I should be in Miami. God says, I brought you to Buffalo because I'm changing the geography of this city. I'm changing the desire to you guys. And your daughter's going to see what you got. Your, your grandfather didn't see. And God says, I'm changing the desire. If you see on your feet, I don't get it. If you see on your feet, I don't get it. Stop. You don't even know what you said to me last night. You was confirming the message. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop begging and plan. You sat in the table. Confirm what God has been telling you that will make you take over the whole block. I'm telling you which folk to write your checks. And I'm going to take care of your college funds for your daughters. Your daughter's college fund is being taken care of. They're going to have full scholarship, not with the government, but you will have the money to fund their education. Don't you worry about them. The geography makes sense. I got you covered. I got her covered. I got your girls covered. As long as you keep obeying me, I'm going to keep blessing you. In Jesus' name. Oh, give him a hand. Give him a hand. Come on, give him a hand. Go back to your seat. I'm, I'm still preaching. God is in this place right now. I don't know if I, if you know this. Oh, my God. I, I need the music. Come on, grab your plug. Grab, grab, grab it. Grab it. Grab the drums. Piano. Go up there with me right now. Yeah. 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 Let him soak it. Let him soak it. That's all right. <laughs> Somebody said, no more begging. Come on, say it, say it. No more begging. I'm done. I'm tired of begging. And the last point is the biography. The biography. So, that, that means that we, we know his condition. We know his location, but we don't know his background. We don't know his name. We don't know his, his legacy. We don't know nothing of him. Isn't, isn't it funny that the people you beg know nothing about you? Yeah. 
Isn't it funny that the people that do not know you <laughs> pretend to know you? The key word is pretend. What is pretend? Is to think or perceive or show that you have information which in fact you have no information or have created false information. I'm about to walk out this place. Biography. Who is, who is he and what makes him? Background, biography. In other words, biography. And it's not just date of birth. It is the background that gives me the history of his lineage. That, 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 but what can people say about you? Do they, do they have any encounter or experience with you? Can they really say, I have, ha I have created history with you? And you got to stop begging people that have no connection with you. Because you think they become a source, but they're not a source, they're a resource. And you're missing the assignment that God, br God brings people into your life that don't look like a blessing, but they got a lot of blessing. I'll say it again one more time. People come to your life that don't look like a blessing and you disregard, you, you reject these people because they don't look like a blessing and all of a sudden God says, I send you a blessing but I want you to know your biography, your history, who you are. Peter, what's this? Verse 3, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he what? He what? He what? He what? Beg. The, the Bible says, I know the Bible says he ask. But I just told you in the beginning that begging is not asking. I'm sorry, sorry. begging is asking, but asking is not begging. Did you get that? I'll, I'll explain it to you. And I'll close it up. Three minutes. I gotta go. <laughs> begging is asking. That means that you gotta use your mouth and your ability to speak to articulate what you want. But begging confuses what you want versus what you need. You missed the whole thing. Begging confuses with the thing that you want, in fact, versus the thing that you really need. Because what you want is temporarily, what you need is permanent. Please, Pastor. I, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. That means that, that you gotta focus yourself on the things that is lasting, rather versus the thing that is what's this diminishing. Because what you ask, what you're begging, will forfeit. But what you're asking God will endure forever. To see the things that I see are temporary, but the things that I don't see are eternal. Is anybody in the house that is tired for begging for things that are temporary and asking God for things? That are permanent. Sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. Keep going, keep going. He begged them. Stay there, stay there. He begged them for money. He begged them for the wrong thing. Because money can fix you. I told you the preaching. You ask him for the thing that will not fix your problem. Money won't fix your problem. Hallelujah. Your job won't fix your problem. Your car won't fix your problem. You know what fixes your problem? It's Jesus. Peace to peace. a season that we got to learn we got to learn we got to learn that people love us 
They love seeing us in a condition, a posture of begging. They love seeing us. They, they love it. They get a joy when they see you crying. They get a joy when they see you broken. They love it. They get a joy seeing you in a corner, quiet, holding your gift back. They get a joy seeing you not singing because they hate when you open your mouth. And if they only knew that you sing sometimes in your brokenness because you do it out of obedience. You do it because you love them. They get a joy seeing you back for something he already put in you. They love it. They love it. They get a joy. But I come here all the way from Jersey to tell you, oh, you don't have to beg no more. 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 I already put it inside of you. Just ask me how, to, how, how do I take it out of you? I'm using trials to take it out of you. I'm using your problem to take it out of you. I'm using your haters to take it out of you. I'm using your pain to bring purpose. God spoke to him on Friday I'm sure you better tell him <laughs> and I didn't know I promised you I did not know she was your wife I know you was married but I didn't know she was your wife this is a powerhouse I'm talking about your worshiping team this right here the devil wants to break but while God unites no man can separate no man can Somebody give a praise right now. Loud, loud, sube, sube, sube. Right now, la, 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 la. No more back. Yeah. If God, if God spoke to you, run to the front. I, come on, you, we got to go. Run. Come on. I'm not begging. This is you. Right at the temple gate. Begging for something that years he's prophesied over your life. Man, it's okay. He's reminding you and giving you clarity that they can know your pathology or your sickness. They can know that. In fact, I let them see your lameness. I let them see your brokenness. That's me. I, 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 I'm exposing. I'm exposing. Your brokenness and I'm gonna let them know your location I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give them your address because you're gonna become a bridge of blessings On the hand of the person next to you. I'm not going down. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not touching nobody. The word touched you already. Yes or no? Yes. Stay looking at me. 
Let it remind you that the Lord has brought you guys, you guys, and I say you guys are the part. This church, I'm just a, uh, no, I have the word, don't worry. Huh? I'm just not a messenger only. I'm, I am an instigator. That's my job to instigate. I came with a needle to poke you. So you go from comfort to purpose. So you go from comfort to moving. I have been calling you right at the gate. I have been calling you right at the gate. Namaste King Doshega. Look at me. They've been carrying you too long. You got used to being carried. But today God is going to move them out of your life. Those who carry you. Because they enjoy carrying you. Because they get a, watch, they get a percentage out of your begging. Okay, let me, let me, shut. let me give you what I got in my notes. The, the, you think, you think carrying was cheap? You think carrying was free? I'm going to give you my seminar and I'm going to pour it to you. A $50,000 seminar. I'm going to give it right now. Listen to this. Hear me out. This is the problem. It wasn't free. Carrying him. Because they get a percentage out of your lameness. They enjoy you being broken. So they can watch a profit out of your begging. But today God is breaking the curse of begging out of your life. And God is saying, they're not going to profit no more from you. I'm going to use... And you're running from the calling. You're running from the calling. But today I'm going to expose your lameness, your pathology. I'm going to explore, expose your location, your geography. But I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to write your biography. I'm going to write your story. Somebody's hand. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see a victory. Yeah, I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle. Father, these people that I hear have come to see you. They need you. So I present them before you. You know this condition. You know the location. And you know the story. I ask you to cover them with your blood. And that you bless every one of them. Their marriages, their houses, their children, their finances, their minds, their psyches. I ask you to bring mental health, emotional health, spiritual health. God bless these people. He's like your children. Let's pass around. Pastor. I'm going to 
gonna see you. I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see you. Pop it right now. I'm gonna see you. 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 Yeah, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see your victory. Yes, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see your victory. Yes, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see your victory. Yeah, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see your victory. Yeah, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see your victory. Oh, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see your victory. Oh, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see your victory. 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 I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see your victory.
the God of miracles. Come on, sing it if you need it. Say, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Yeah, I believe in you. Jesus. 